Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions' The Breeze, where we are excited to kick off our coverage of this year's Santa Barbara International Film Festival. And we're excited to bring two filmmakers here who have a documentary that is world premiering at the festival, Reclaim Idaho. So how are you? And thank you so much for joining us. So the only remaining asset she has is her home, right? And I knock on her door and she is grappling the decision is my life worth saving if it's going to make my family homeless? I am just a stranger who's knocked on her door. And here she is, like, genuinely asking my advice. Like, am I worth saving? My husband and I were talking and thinking, wow, what, what can we do about this? Like, sharing things on Facebook or retweeting them doesn't move the needle at all. Literally 60 to 70 people showed up just like on short notice to come to this thing and go knock on doors. People just wanted to do something. Knock on every door. My name's Emily and I'm a volunteer. I'm talking to folks about voting today. We need to organize a statewide tour. Garrett came home one day and was just like, hey, I think we should paint our RV green and drive it around the state. As I'm driving down the highway, like moss and branches and things are like flying off of it. And they say, no, that's not popular here. You know, that's not gonna go. Pe people don't like Medicaid expansion. People shouldn't have had to speak so loudly about this. The politicians should have done something about this crisis. And they've just been playing political football with people's lives. People thought we were gonna get just terrorized going to rural towns. They thought we were gonna like get Molotov cocktails thrown at us. We're getting a lot of don't talk to me anymore on, on this list. We need people, each and every person, to know what this is and why this is important. When you get out there and talk to people, you see how popular this is, and then other people throw themselves into the fight. It's not a matter of reaching across the aisle. It's a matter of going out to ordinary people and reaching out to them. It's more like reaching across the doorstep <laughs> and uh, rather than the aisle. Medicaid has touched so many lives here. I'm not just gonna be silent anymore. I'm not just gonna assume that common sense will prevail. We have been working for a year for these days. I just don't wanna wake up tomorrow and think I could have done something more, you know? Can we count in your vote? Are you gonna vote? How's your voting feel? Are you a voter? Yes! Yes! All of a sudden, this whole movement has just snowballed into something massive, and we're at the helm, and so, you just have to keep going. If we go out and organize around issues, around values that unite us, if we map out a clear strategy and pursue it relentlessly, we have power. I don't know what I'm gonna do when this campaign's over without all the opportunities to like talk to strangers, because it's really lovely. But yeah, we've had a good time today. Hi, thanks Hi. for having us. We're great. <laughs> all things considered, we're yeah, great. we're great. Awesome, awesome. So tell us a little bit about Reclaim Idaho. Um, well, it's a, it's a doc that um, we shot in, back in 2018. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of layers to it, but at, at its core, it's, uh, it's about a family who saw that their neighbors were suffering and decided to do something about it. And that ultimately turned into a statewide campaign of volunteers, uh, grassroots organizing, and uh, advocacy for the expansion of Medicaid in Idaho, um, which is a state that uh, that shouldn't really happen in, according, no. to what, according to what literally everybody told us and them, even yeah. while they were trying to do it. Um, yeah. So we followed them in the last week of that campaign up towards the vote and to see uh, if they were they could pull it off. Yeah, I, I thought it was really cool when uh, when I first watched or uh, learned about it. I was curious to know more because I am a, a supporter of, of Medicare for all and that I saw that it was involving a group of individuals that were riding around in the, an RV or a van essentially and they just spray painted the side of it vote for prop two, you know, that make Idahoans, uh, you know, have the health care or expand Medicare essentially. So uh, where did this involvement with uh, with Idaho come in? How did you link up with the subjects to make the stock? Um, so we. Uh 
Jim and I have been working and doing, uh, you know, a lot of commercial production and digital content and things like that. And we really wanted to uh, make something that was just a little more serious and would hopefully be about healthcare. Um, and we've been talking to our buddy, Tim Faust, who is a really active um, healthcare advocate and activist, um, trying to figure out, you know, what the story would be. Um, and one day he called and he said, you guys got to hear this. There's a, a married couple. They're driving around. They've got this little baby. They've got this beat up old RV. They painted it green. They're driving it all around Idaho and they're trying to get Medicaid expansion passed. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to help them out. And you guys should come. Um, so we did. Uh, nice. And I mean, we really didn't know anything about Idaho um, before we left. You know, we were from New York. We live in Brooklyn and uh, Potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Potatoes. We sort Someone of vaguely knew. knew that, you know, we vaguely knew that it was a red state. Um, we didn't know just how conservative it was, it was purported to be, you know, until we started doing some research before we, we actually left for the trip. Um, yeah. And, you know, we thought this has got to be an underdog story. I mean, there's no way, right? Like the conventional wisdom about red states would tell you that you know, this sort of campaign shouldn't even get off the ground. Right. Um, but that just wasn't true, you know? Um, yeah. so it, it was really uh, I mean, one of the first, amazing. one of the first questions we asked was like, is, is, is are, are we going out to, to follow a, a, this sort of depressing story of, of people just getting destroyed by, by, uh, you know, a, a other opinions just, of the a pipe, just a pipe dream you yeah. know just like yeah. what why should we even go out there but tim was pretty adamant he's he, he was saying no man like this there's really something going on here and and you know he went out there on his you know on his own dime as he does you know his advocacy and stuff so yeah, yeah. these folks really um, believed in it and that they dedicated all of their yeah. time energy and effort into building a, a group of people to help talk about this uh this plan and I thought there was one really cool moment like on the day of, of voting where they go to the bars and they're just like we're looking for votes and then they make some magic at the last minute I thought that was like that was pretty cool actually they bring bringing in one of the last people to vote to see what they can do to make it pass and uh yeah. that that's heart right there that and um while you were filming it though as it was going on were you thinking we're we're hoping for a good result we really want this to end up in a, in a good fashion I, how is your heart playing out because you can you can do all of this you don't know how the end result will be but what are yeah. your what are your thoughts as you were filming you know to look cuz you, you put a lot of time and energy into it as well yeah i mean the crazy thing is we expected a lot of hostility and conflict and when we got there uh, it was almost like we didn't have time to have a feeling about it. Like there's, I mean, we, I met Emily, one of the main characters from behind the lens. There's, it's in, it's in it's, the film. It's in the film. Like I met her and I, like, I was behind the camera. There was, it, it, it there was such a tremendous uh, amount of energy and devotion with them. And, and, and they were, the, this thing was moving ahead at such a pace that I, I mean, I guess it, it, to answer the question, maybe like it just seemed inevitable which seems nuts. Like, yeah. I think we it certainly wasn't what we had expected, but they were just so busy. And, and um, I don't know, it just seemed to, to me at any rate, like this really does look like this is going to happen. Yeah. And, and yeah. It was like that one, every single vote, every single yeah. person they talked to was as important as the last. They, they really. Their heart they, was in it. Their heart was oh, in yeah. it. And there wasn't any like magic uh you know sauce to it yeah they just talked sure. they kept talking to people yeah. they're like no we're gonna do it till the very last minute you know yeah that was very good to see and i enjoyed watching it because you can literally see trend tra they transmit their their passion for for making this work while they continue to go door to door do their the knocking that they could they you know spending whatever they have which was not much to just really put it together they had someone else come in that really wanted to help them grow as well so he put whatever he could into it and they made their team um, but I, for those that don't know about Idaho, what have you learned from being in Idaho? I mean, in New York and California, you know, I'm, I've never been, but I've, I'm curious, what, what are your takeaways about Idaho? Um, I mean, first of all, it's beautiful. It, it's, a, it's a stunning yeah. place. It's so gorgeous. And um, the people are just really lovely. Um, you know, and I think the thing that I learned about Idaho is sort of a thing that I feel like I've learned about a lot of places that 
we think of as red states, um, which is that those divisions that I think a, a lot of people are really invested in sowing between, you know, left and right and red and blue and Democrat and Republican, um, they're a little bit artificial. You know, I mean, certainly there are political disagreements within these kinds of places and, and there's a lot of differences of opinion and, and you're gonna find extremes on both sides. But for the most part, what we saw um, was a community that regardless of their you know, vision of political policy, didn't wanna see people dying for lack of healthcare. You know? and, and I think that um, that was a huge lesson because it's so, so easy to look at the news media and you know, particularly cable news media, um, which, you know, I mean, they're making their money on you know building all of these huge ideas about, uh, you know, kind of a, a team sport approach to politics, um, us versus them, and uh, I don't think that's the way to get things done. And I I think that what we saw was something really hopeful, in terms of what's possible um, for unity. And, and for social change and for health equity in general. Um, so I, I left feeling um, a lot of affection for Idaho, um, uh -huh. but also a lot of hope about, um, you know, what's possible moving forward politically in the next decade or so. Yeah, I, I like the way that you phrase that. I believe that unity is something that all of us need uh, now more than ever. Uh, I also, after I was done watching the film, I went on Zillow and I looked on what was available in Boise just because I was curious. <laughs> and I thought that that was pretty interesting to learn the landscape of Idaho. So I've also read that many, many people are now moving there because of uh, remote work and more affordability. And it was wow. also interesting to learn about the what the minimum wage is in Idaho versus what it is in California and mm -hmm. New York and how people really really need to stretch their dollars. So, you know, they're, and, the, and the wage gaps between having this accessibility to Medicare or not is something very perilous for a lot of people. So all of these subjects really tied together in the film, which I very much enjoyed. And I want to congratulate you on your acceptance, your world premiere at the Santa Barbara Film Festival. And in closing, is there anything that you'd like to say to the Santa, Bar Santa Barbara Film Festival organization? Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks thank for, you. I, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's thank you. We're thrilled. I mean, it just, it's such a uh, wonderful festival to be part of, yeah. you know, uh, and we, we feel like uh, really honored and thrilled that this is where we get to have our world premiere. It's a dream. Very nice. Very nice. Well, again, congratulations. We hope to showcase your film Reclaim Idaho to our viewers. And I thank you for taking the time to join us today on The Breeze. So once again, mm -hmm. congratulations on Reclaim Idaho. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you.